Real America is how we're connected. It's not what's missing between the cities. It's what's there, a storehouse of assets and resourcefulness that we all depend on to feed us, to fuel our enterprises, to help us find our bearings. Rural America is vast, but it's not empty. There are more than 55 million of us living in the countryside trying to make our way. Mostly we earn a living, help out in the community, and hope to make some provision for what might come next. The situation's not always ideal. Just now, rural America faces tough challenges. Poverty rates are alarmingly high. So are the rates of addiction and suicide. There's great concern among rural families for the next generation's chances to hang on and do better. are the kind of challenges we've faced before. And in many small communities across the countryside, people who care are finding innovative and decent ways to face tough challenges and change things for the better. In rural New Mexico, community members came together to create health care for towns where no service previously existed. Before, I, just, I was just raising my family. Uh, you know, we were struggling like, like everybody else. Uh, and I had a son that got shot and died. You know, I, I came out fighting. The one that really got a hold of me that I could see that needed help with uh, the health. I saw that the health touches everything. In rural Maine, a nonprofit enterprise encourages business development that makes sense for local villages and small towns. The question here is, uh, what are the assets and talents or potential in local communities? What can be unleashed? What value can be added? In a self-help way, uh, we're not talking about uh, bringing in uh, companies. We're not talking about importing a labor. We're talking about working with what is here and maximizing uh, that value. In rural Arizona, Navajo communities put into practice strategies for teaching language and culture. As Navajo people, as Diné, our language is the biggest part of who we are. If we don't have the language, then we're not able to identify ourselves through kinship, through our clan, through speaking from the heart, not being able to communicate with our elders, not being able to communicate with the holy people. In the Mississippi Delta, one rural organization used the lessons of the civil rights movement to build community assets, public facilities, and education programs. It hasn't, you know, it hasn't been easy, but at least it, our effort created an open door. I'm not accrediting the total change of community to no one group of folk. It's the effort that was put forth, and, and it was some hope. Now, you know, you can't make people love you. You can't make people get along with you. But at least you can, you, you can, you can live a life that uh, people have to respect. This country was founded on rural principles of owning your own land. This lady got her house last night. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> having the freedom to find your own way. As bad as times get, you still want to, you know, you have that connection to the land and to the, you know, it's just, uh, it's not a doubt. And taking the responsibility to help out your neighbor when things weren't going well. People will volunteer and they'll work hard to help make things better for themselves. And I think that's in, in, in any community. And in the countryside, those same principles have built and sustained social change that worked from agrarian populism to the rural civil rights movement to farm worker organizing. We're not afraid of fights. You know, we actually kind of like them because it, it's exciting. Uh, some of our, our, our greatest opponents have now become our strongest allies. 
Rural people have always had the power to shake the world and work together to make something better. Mm -hmm.